the supporting singers and actors who open up the program by doing their preliminary bit. They come out first. You see them first. But they soon step back and say, ladies and gentlemen, the star of our show, Red Skelton. Just like those supporting actors, we too must step back and declare the star of our preaching show. Stepping back so that the star of our preaching show can be vividly displayed under the preaching spotlight. Just as those singers and dancers do for the star of the Red Skelton Show. For if the star of our preaching show is hindered by us, and we do, if he's hindered by us, the supporting cast, and we often hinder him and block him out with shenanigans, with our voices, some moan and some hum and some cord pulling with our voices, and with our butts too, the way we deliberately try to switch our robes in being cute. Shenanigans in competing for the spotlight with our voices and with our butts. Even if such shenanigans are carried on in the pulpit with a robe choir at the holy hour of eleven on holy Sunday morning, even if the holy organ is bathing our souls in peeling forth Sweet hour prayer. Even if religious words of eloquence are flowing from us like sweet wine. Even if we get the place to rockin' and the sisters to tan that place up shouting on Sunday morning. Even if all of these holy religious trappings are there. But are hindering the star of our show, from being vividly seen, then it is nothing more than a human comedy. Really, a human tragedy taking place in the church on Sunday morning. We're preaching is fundamentally and foremost divine activity. In fact, to be perfectly frank about it, God does not necessarily need us humans to do his preaching for him. For he has done it all by himself lots of times without us humans without you and me participating. For God can make his heavens declare his glory and the firmament proclaim his miraculous power and bring sons to repentance without us. And he has done it lots and lots of times without us. I'm sure, for example, that you recall the instance when there was a man on the Midian desert pondering his fate, wondering what he should do. A man on the run and pausing at this juncture just for a breath of air and ready to run again. And behold, there appeared unto him on that desert, on the desert, a burning bush. Not a human voice, but a burning bush that was not being consumed 
by that fire. And at that moment, a man was claimed, ordained, commissioned, dedicated to the purpose of God for the rest of his life. He stopped running. A sermon must have been preached on that desert because a soul was saved. And yet there was no human voice delivering that sermon. All that Midian desert. For God preached that day all by himself. Without us. And we could go on to tell about the claiming of the prophet Elijah. Who cringed in fear for his life in a cave. He was running too. He was hiding. A man in hiding in a cave, scared to come out because of that hussy Je Jezebel. We're in the midst of silence. God preached his own message and soothed Elijah's fears and commissioned him to become one of the most Fearless prophets in Israel. Think of it. A coward in a cage, cage. Coming from that cave to be one of the most fearless prophets in Israel's history. A sermon must have been preached in that cave. Because a soul was saved. And yet there was no human voice delivering that sermon in that darkened cave. Just a still, small voice of silence. Elijah tells us. For God preached that day. All by himself. Without us. And we could go on uh, to tell about others. Many, many others to whom God preached his own message all by himself. Without us. Many others who would make the same testimony of God being able to preach without the human voice. Holy men such as Abraham, Joshua, Amos, Jeremiah, Isaiah, John the Baptist, Jesus our Lord, Peter, Paul, Augustine, Luther, John Wesley, George Fox, General William Booth of the Salvation Army, Billy Graham sang it and still sang it. Harry Emerson Fawcett and even your humble servant standing before you. All of us will come into court gladly and will testify willingly that God himself all by himself can preach his own message without the human agent. For we all know in depth that preaching is fundamentally and foremost divine activity. And that God has done this preaching work all by himself Lots and lots of times without the human agent. So if we fully understand what is really happening in preaching, 
even though the word of God is very nigh to us and seems to be coming from us. And many people will foolishly endeavor to worship us rather than the true and living God. If we fully understand what is really happening in preaching, then we know for ourselves and must make it crystal clear to others that the deep work of preaching is all divine. The deep work the deep work of preaching is all divine. For preaching is fundamentally and foremost divine activity. God himself the star of our preaching show, busily engaged in initiating, attending, and effectuating the call in his kingdom for life and for light. As his own preacher, behind every preaching, bit of preaching, that seems to be coming from the mouth of the human agent. Thus, this is the first thing that we must say in our working definition of preaching. For we must sentence that prevailing fallacy about who is the star of our show to the gas chambers as a service to humanity. So we say dogmatically in our working definition that preaching is fundamentally and foremost divine activity wherein the word of God is proclaimed or announced on contemporary issues. with a view to an ultimate response to our God. Divine activity. God himself as the star of the show. As his own preacher. at the deepest level of preaching.